Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a new build. It's a 2019 GMC Yukon Denali. And it might look really familiar, like that one that we rebuilt a couple years back. Link's up there if you want to see that rebuild. And that's because, well, it is that rebuild. Uh, I got it back again. So it was one of my favorite builds because, well, I really liked the vehicle and I really did enjoy the job because it was nice and easy. So Unfortunately, it's too nice for me, so we're gonna have to get rid of it again. Uh, it wasn't only my favorite. A lot of other people really felt upset that they missed out on it because it sold so fast. So here's your chance to get it again. And don't think you missed out on it. Just think of it as it went on a nice long test drive to make sure there were no problems with it so that it would be perfect for you. Uh, turns out it's got a couple problems. So let's take care of those problems so that we can get it up for sale. Uh, the first problem we have is it has an antifreeze smell if you've been driving it all day long and you park it in the garage. So let's see what that is and take care of that and move on to our next issues. So this one was pretty easy to diagnose. We didn't even need any kind of tools, just our eyeballs. A little bit of the Dex Cool Crusties coming out of that heater hose. So we're going to go ahead and change both of them. And just go down here to the water pump. Yay, spring clamps. So it doesn't look too hard to change. We'll see if we can do it with minimal mess and lose as little coolant as possible, since GM is really proud of those heater hoses and they're quite expensive. Pull our air snorkel out of here, baffle, whatever you want to call this big plastic thing. Not that we really need to take it out of here, but it'd be a lot easier to get down there if this is out of the way. So we'll loosen up the boot on the throttle body. And there's a breather on each side. Just press the little white tab and it pops right out of there. And we'll disconnect it from the mass airflow sensor. And just pull it straight forward off of its little mounting tabs. So much room for activities. So to keep the mess to a minimum and lose as little antifreeze as possible, we're gonna pull it into a vacuum while we change these heater hoses. We're gonna do one at a time. Uh, we're gonna use our little airlift. If you want one of these, uh, makes refilling the cooling system and not losing a bunch of coolant much easier. These are available on my Amazon store. A uh, couple different versions. So let's get it hooked up so we can get these heater hoses off. Just put a pair of vice grips on our heater hoses and pinch them off. It'll also help us lose a little less coolant. Now we can go attack our spring clamps. These are the awesome kind with little locks in there. Turn themselves into a booby trap. So the first one didn't lock, so we just slid it back on the hose. The second one locked, so I was just trying to tap it to see if I could defuse the little metal time bomb. So we're doing this live. So pop our little clip off here that holds the hoses. And pull our hoses out of it. And then we can disconnect our quick disconnects from the other side. They're actually quick connects, they don't disconnect so quickly. Especially since GM got cheap and they Made the tabs smaller so you have no place to really push on them. First one came off, it wasn't too bad. And then there's a lot of coolant, so we'll try to get the other one off. This one I had to use a pick because, well, there's not enough tab to get my little fingers on there. And yes, I am wearing gloves. Every time I get one side disconnected, I go to the other side and the first side clips back in and I just keep going back and forth. One of these times I'm either gonna get it or stab myself in the finger. I win, we got it. That was our leaky one. Now to properly use these connectors, we're gonna pull the old plastic off of here. You can clip them back on, but Take the old plastic off and they just snap right on. 
instead of trying to line up the holes with the little plastic tabs. Make sure we got the right one going in the right spot. These ones are different colors, but still want to make sure. Put it on there and tug on it a little bit, make sure it's locked in. Wiggle our old hose off and slip our new one on. That was the easy one. And our hose clamp was locked. And we can pull it over the hose and slide the hose on the rest of the way. Flip our other hose on the heater core. Do the wiggle, make sure it's on there. And slide our hose on there. Oops, we spilled some coolant. The sea turtles will get that. We'll slide our hose clamp back up. Make sure you make the hose clamp face, or it's not going to work. And we'll clip our heater hoses back in our little plastic clip. And we'll close its little door. Now we can defuse our little hose clamp time bomb, the one that's locked open. No casualties. So we can throw our baffle back on here. Line it up with the throttle body and its little tabs. And slide it on there. Put in our breathers. Our snorkel on our air box. And start tightening up all of our clamps. And our screwdriver is headed for Narnia. And we're going to have to find it. And it's way down here. Luckily, it got stuck in the gumdrop forest, so we got it back. Just tighten up that clamp. Hold on to the screwdriver a little tighter this time. Top off our antifreeze. Well, I lost maybe a quart at the most. Not going to take much. if I can manage to get it in the overflow bottle. I'm gonna drive it around and move on to the next. I drove it around a little bit. Our antifreeze is still full. We don't have any leaks, so we're all good there. And that concludes everything that we had to take care of on this, except for an oil change. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. And I really wanted to get a Fram filter to trigger the experts of the internet, but unfortunately, Napa was closer. So they're going to get a pass today, and we're just going to put a Napa filter on it. But I'm sure there's people that don't like Napa filters. So let's piss off those people and throw this filter on. So we'll pull our oil filter off first. Where did all this antifreeze come from? Oh, that's right, that messy guy up top. Never cleans up after himself. We'll just drive through a big puddle. We'll get it. Loosen up our oil plug while we're letting our filter drain. See if we can not drop it in the drain pan. This thing's still pretty clean under here. It spent most of its winters in a nice warm garage instead of out on the salty roads. Success. Well, at least we haven't dropped it in there yet. And we'll let that drain. And we'll be back when it's empty. It's kind of empty. Clean up the mounting surface for the gasket. And we did put some oil on the gasket, so don't come at me for that. 
Spin our oil filter on there. Grab our torque rag. Tighten it down to manufacturer specs. Click. Couldn't quite get that click out of there. And we'll put our drain plug back in. Take note, Jiffy Lube. Clean up our mess. You know me. Always clean it up. Grab the wrench that walked away. Now we're going to move the drain pan before I end up dropping the wrench in it. Because you know that's going to happen. Tighten our drain plug up to 6,000 foot-pounds, or when it strips out, whichever comes first. And then we're going to dump our oil back in. Hopefully we get some in the engine. The stuff that goes on the engine is just going to turn into engine dressing. And we'll reset our oil change light. Pretty easy on this. Just go to the oil light monitor and hold the check mark and pull it beeps. And we're done. 18,237 miles. We went on a little test drive and got a message on the dash that says the key fob battery is dying. So we're going to go ahead and change that. And the buttons didn't work occasionally, so hopefully it's a bad battery and not a bad fob. Take the ring off of it. We're going to push it out of its little remote condom. Take the little emergency key out of there. I mean screwdriver. And we're going to use our newly found screwdriver to pry the case open. There's a little slot in there. It's almost like it was made for that. Oh, kind of. There we go. Got the back off of there. So now we got to pry our battery out of there. Use our screwdriver again. Be nice if they made it a little thinner. I could go get a screwdriver, but that would require me to walk like 20 feet. So we have our new battery. Just make sure we got it in the right way and clip it back in there. I saved you the trouble of watching me struggle trying to get the battery out of the package, which is actually the hardest part of this entire job. Clip the back back on. Put our screwdriver back in here for next time. And slide it back in its little condom. And we might as well put the key ring back on. That's it. Our Yukon is back from the detailing gnome. Basically all you had to do was wash it and give it a quick vacuum. There wasn't much to do. I feel like I should have got a discount for this one. That's okay, I'll make sure I put plenty of dirty parts on the next one and give them one that's extra dirty, just to make it fair. I didn't even make them clean under the hood because I did want to drive it around and I didn't want it all clean under there. I wanted to be able to see if it was leaking in the antifreeze. And it's not, so we're all good. This thing pretty much has all the bells and whistles, rear DVD player, sunroof, every button you can imagine. I 
I'd prefer a black interior, but this wasn't that bad. It just gets dirty when I'm in it. WeatherTech floor liners and a cargo shade and a little organizer for back here and a couple other little bonuses in the rear cargo compartment. So let's see what our competition is selling Yukons for so that we can accurately price ours. See if we have the lowest mile one in the country. We're going to search the whole country. Yukon, Denali, I believe this one's actually an ultimate, but we'll just call it a regular Denali. Let's search 18 and 19s, I would go to 20, but they changed the body style, so it's not really comparable. Four-wheel drive. That's our basics. So let's see. Lowest mileage. Now this one's a sponsored. We don't count that. So we have eighteen thousand on ours. Oh, there's one with lower miles. It's in New Jersey, and they want 52000 for it. Okay, this one has almost 10,000 miles more, and it's 49000 So these are clear titles, generally worth a little bit more. This one's in Oregon. Shipping would be quite expensive over here. And we're at 30,000 for 46. Thirty-one thousand for forty-four. So we have the second lowest mile one in the country, at least on cars.com. So let's check car gurus. See if they have anything different. A lot of times it's the same vehicles, but sometimes there's some different ones. How did you know what I was looking for? You stalking me? Okay. Let's go with Denali, four wheel drive, and Oops. Clicking faster than the computer's working. And we'll go with this one just in case. All wheel drive or four wheel drive. Nationwide. Got to change it a year. Let's see. We'll do 18 and 19 again. Okay. Should be everything we need to find what we're looking for. Then we just got to put them in order. Lowest mileage. Mm, these are all sponsored, I believe. And here starts our real ones. So this is a different one. It is a Denali four-wheel drive. Oh, the miles are a couple hundred under R, so this is a perfect comp. Uh, it doesn't have the fancy wheels. This is a Denali, but it's the cheaper Denali. Uh, and they want 51, so let's just take a look at it. Great.
pretty much the same as mine. This one's got a bug shield. Uh, this one also doesn't have the power running boards. Looks like we got some floor liners and floor mats. Uh, no rear DVD in this one. But it's pretty comparable with the miles. We're not looking for an exact replacement. Yeah, no rear DVD. Otherwise, it's almost a twin. Okay. Let's see if there's any others. No pictures. Not interested. This one is from the other site. Uh, here's another one. 31,000 miles. They want 52 for it, and this looks like it's the exact same truck. It definitely has the power running boards and not many more pictures. So we're done looking at that one. I did see one here. Uh, no price analysis. That usually means that it doesn't have a clear title or something. So let's take a look at it. This one has a DVD. So this one is 44 miles or what? 12,000 more? 13,000 more? Let's see. Ah, history. It's a theft recovery. So that's why it doesn't have a price analysis. So. As far as comps go, this one's not too bad. The miles make a big difference though. I think we've seen enough. So I have the third lowest mile one in the country, I guess. But all the other low mile ones are over 50. All right, well, I think I got an idea where to price mine at. And that's how I find the prices for my vehicles. Well, it looks like our rebuild is complete on our Yukon here. It didn't take a whole lot. It's nice when I get a vehicle back that's in the same condition I sold it in. Actually, this one might actually be in a little better condition than I sold it in. It's got a few extra add-ons that I didn't sell it with, and it definitely was taken care of. It was washed and waxed pretty much every week, whether it left the garage or not. It wasn't really driven in the winter all that much, and the oil changes every 2,500 miles. So they took care of this thing. But now it's time for its new home. So if you missed out on it last time and you want to put it in your driveway this time, head over to my website and pick it up. It can be yours. I really do enjoy driving this thing. Put about 300 miles on it. Uh, great road trip vehicle. It's just a little too nice for me. I'm going to go back to my beater. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.